Hello automators! I know you've got a Nest speaker that you're struggling with or you just want a guide for how to set it up properly. My video here will have all the tips and tricks you need for getting it connected, getting it working in your home and I will deal with something new called the device utility app that you might be struggling with here today. So let's go! Once you have your Google Nest speaker out of the box and you plug it in, then you should hear a prompt that tells you it's ready for setup and to download the Google Home application. If you don't, you may want to factory reset the speaker. To do that, what you do is you wait until it's booted up and you mute the microphone. Then you hold your finger on the top of the speaker until it says this. You're about to completely reset this device. Release to cancel. You wait for that chime, which will take a couple of seconds, and then it will turn back on and tell you it's ready for setup. Hi. To get started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. You can see that I've gone into a new Google account here. This is what a lot of you will be starting with. So this doesn't have a home in the Google Home application. We've done no setup whatsoever. You'll notice here that it says Setup Nest Mini and that's because it actually found this speaker sitting here ready for setup. The reason it found it and what you will need to make sure you have turned on is Bluetooth here. So I have Bluetooth turned on on my phone that allows it to find this device. You'll also have requests for things like location services when you first start up the Google Home application. You have to allow those to get that little connection to happen. The other thing that you will need is for an internet or a Wi-Fi connection in your home. So I'm going to hold on that and you can see that I am connected to my home's Wi-Fi doesn't matter if that Wi-Fi is 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. The other thing you might notice is that this Nest Mini is broadcasting its own Wi-Fi. That's a good indication for you that this has been factory reset and is ready to be set up. So if you don't see that setup Nest Mini just show up here after about 30 seconds of waiting once it's ready to set up, well then you can hit the plus up here. And you can see that I've got to create a new home the first time. I'm just going to call this home and I'm going to hit continue. You can add in an address if you'd like. This helps to get things like weather. So if you want to do that, go ahead. I'm going to skip it for now. You don't actually need that and you can always add it later. So now I'm going to hit the plus again and because I have a home inside the Google Home application, I can choose now to set up a device. So I'm going to add something new or a new device like a Google Chromecast or a Google Nest speaker. I've chosen my home and if you wanted to add one you could hit that but I'm choosing my home that I just set up and I'm hitting next. This is the reason I'm making the video here today because this can be really confusing and really difficult. Now the Nest Mini was found but it needs to be activated before setup. What's happened here is the result of a lawsuit between Google and Sonos where uh, Google actually has to remove some features that were originally on this device. What they're telling you to do is go to the Help Center. If you hit Not Now, you can't get this set up. If you set up a different device, it might work. And you might not be getting this right now. If you're not, that's good news for you. We'll move forward a little bit in the setup video and you'll continue on. So I'm going to go to the Help Center. Where you'll see on this page where you need to go is down here where it says Google Play Store. So there's something called the Device Utility App and you need to download this in order to basically update this device to a certain firmware version. Once it's updated then it's allowed to come into the Google Home app. It's the whole lawsuit thing here. I'm going to hit the open button. I had already installed that. Welcome to the device utility app. I'm going to hit next and it requests all kinds of access here. So you need to allow location access and it will ask to turn on Bluetooth if that's not already on. 
In this case, and on this phone, I have to go to the settings for location access, and I need to make sure that it's allowed to do this. So I've allowed two things, and you'll probably just be able to hit OK to allow these permissions. I actually turned them off after having used them before. But my location and nearby devices are both allowed to be used in my permissions. The next step, now that we have all those permissions, is to turn off our Wi-Fi. So I'm just going to tap there and I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi. Now this is an Android, it's a Pixel phone. Yours might look a little bit different, but now I'm off of my Wi-Fi and you can see I went back to the application and it's now looking for the device and it found it. Again, this is because Bluetooth is available on both the phone and the Nest Mini. If you have a number of things around the Nest Mini that could cause interference like metal or big appliances or microwaves or other Wi-Fi connected devices, you might find that connection doesn't happen between these two. So make sure, number one, your phone's not connected to a bunch of other Bluetooth devices and it should pair just like that very easily. So yes, we did hear the sound, and now we're going to connect this speaker to our Wi-Fi. Because it's a Nest Mini, or because it's a Nest speaker in general, whatever you have, this will work just fine on 2.4 or 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So I've chosen my Wi-Fi network, and I'm gonna hit Next. I've already entered a password for my Wi-Fi. You would have to enter yours now. And if you made a mistake before you change your password, you can enter manually down here. Otherwise, we're just gonna hit next again. And now we're connecting this device to the Wi-Fi in our home. So if this is not working, one of the biggest things that you can do is to take devices that are currently connected to your Wi-Fi, take them off, turn them off, reset your router or reset your mesh Wi-Fi system and it should make a good connection. Again, you wanna watch out for any devices that are interfering here uh, that could stop that process from happening. But you saw how quick and easy that whole process went here for me when you have everything kind of open in air and you're kind of close to your Wi-Fi or you have good Wi-Fi signal wherever this Nest Mini is sitting. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my Wi-Fi on my phone. It's allowing me to do that now. I saw it go connected and I'm gonna hit done. Now it's activated and this speaker is getting a firmware update. I'm going to open the Google Home app and it will say, hey, okay, you've partially set this one up. If it doesn't come to this page right away, I have run into an issue where basically this is receiving the firmware update and it's not responding to me tapping on it. So here you go. It's actually happened now live as I'm doing this. When this happens, the speaker is probably not going to be found by the Google Home application. I'm going to continue and try this and then we'll talk about the way to get around this. If you go into the Google Home application and get it constantly looking for devices, then I want you to try and adjust the volume by tapping on the sides. What you're noticing here is that just the two lights on the side are turning on, and now my volume controls are actually turning on in the middle. Understand that if your volume controls are not coming on when you tap on the side of this device, then it's unresponsive and it is getting that firmware update. So give it time until it becomes responsive. After that, then you can try in the Google Home application again. And you can see that my phone is looking for devices, but I've just hit cancel because it wasn't being successful. I went through the setup process again and it still didn't work. So if you've gone through this cycle a couple of times and you keep coming to this page right here, well, your device is basically not ready for setup, even though it's said it has. So 
What I want you to do once you're sure that the volume controls are working correctly is to mute the microphone, which gets you the four orange lights on the top of your Nest Mini, and then hold on the top to your cause a factory reset, reset to, to happen. Release. Then wait until it says it's ready for setup and re-enter into the Google Home application and everything should work from there. I'm gonna hit next and you can see it's giving us a chance to help improve Nest Mini. I always say no thanks to this. This is sending statistics and things to Google based on your device or device crashes. Now you have to choose where this one is going. I'm going to choose the bedroom, but you can see I have a lot of different rooms and if I'd like, I can add a custom room. This will allow me to name any room so you can break down your home any way you would like inside of this application. Now it's talking to us about the Google Assistant. The Google Assistant is what you request information from whenever you use the wake words. This is just some information about how they're using the information or your data and how they're using the Google Assistant. I would recommend that you do have a read through some of these things and learn about your privacy. One of the best features of a Google Home or a Google Nest speaker is the ability to set up voice match. And this means that your device will know it's you speaking to the device. When you do this, you get more features, which I'll show you in a minute. So in general, I would say you want to continue with this. You don't have to, and you can always set it up later and you can hit not now if you want to do it that way. But I'll show you what this entails and then what you get access to. So as I hit continue, it allows us to be identified and then it will tell you which devices will recognize your voice. So if you add more later and you decide to have voice match on those other speakers or other devices, you can agree to that and then your voice will already be there. Google, what's the weather tomorrow? Google, remind me to water my plants every Monday. Google, make a call. Hey Google, set a timer for five minutes. The next component is about saving audio and this audio is being used by Google. They review it. They have a look at whether or not the speaker worked out correctly. You can decide to start saving that audio with them or you can say not now. And I'm going to recommend for most people you can just say not now. Here are the benefits of your voice match. Now, Personal results are a number of things like your calendar when you set that up or different information that you give the device for yourself. And I think the calendar is the best one here. So if you've done voice match, you're probably going to want to turn on this. If you haven't done voice match, you won't get that prompt. This is a nice offer if you want to set this up. YouTube Premium allows you to basically have ad-free YouTube and that does include some other things. So I could redeem that if I'd like, but I'm going to hit no thanks right now. The next three things we can set up are music and radio, watching movies and shows, and the ability to call friends and family. So I've selected all of them. You don't have to do all of this now. The device is actually ready to go right now, but I think most people will want to set these things up. We're going to start playing our favorite music. The list of services you'll have here will differ by the country that you're in. So depending on where you live, you might see different choices. You'll notice that both YouTube Music and Spotify say a free service is available. So if you haven't signed up for a music account or a music service, these are good choices for you. And I'll tell you that in general, the Google Assistant works better with its own services. So I'm going to choose YouTube Music for myself right now. You are using the Google account that you first set up the Google Home application with. So whatever account you're using there is the YouTube Music account, at least for now. With Spotify and Apple Music, you can link those other accounts. So that becomes very easy to use any of your paid accounts. When you get to this page, it 
it looks like you can't play regular radio stations, but you can just ask for your local radio station. And in most cases, this will just start playing. So you don't need to worry about that. The only point here is if you have a Sirius XM subscription, you can add that in. Watching our favorite movies and shows, that is something we'd wanna do if we had a Chromecast or uh, maybe a Nest Hub device. Now you can link any of these accounts simply by hitting plus and then it will say yes link accounts and now you just have to sign in to your Netflix account. Once you have that signed in, then you can use this. You can say, hey, play this on whatever device you'd like on Netflix and you can say which show you'd like. A great piece of news for those of you who are in a few select countries is that you can make phone calls with this. And they're actually Google Duo calls in a lot of cases now. The very first thing is get started with voice calls. So you can set, you can start and receive high quality voice calls with anyone who has Google Duo. I'm gonna hit the continue on this and it's going to ask me for my phone number. So now I've typed in my phone number, I'm hitting next, and I'm going to get a verification code that's coming through a text message here that I can simply put in the, the verification code box here. So I've gotta hit next and that's all gonna happen within a minute, but now it's verified my phone number and it's attached that to this speaker. Whenever I make phone calls, it can show up with my phone number there and therefore correctly work. Now we're moving on to adding what's called household contacts. So these are people that are kind of uh, a speed dial. So you're going to be able to give them a nickname and that means that it's a little easier to call them. Keep in mind, this is part of that personal results thing. So if you've set that up, then it's going to remember who you are and make those phone calls. Now, I can pick from all of my different contacts that I have in my phone, but it's kind of pulled some of the ones out that I call quite often. So I'm going to choose one of my contacts and I'm adding their all of their information here as a household contact. Do you want to get extra emails basically about services and offers with your new Google Nest Mini? You can sign up or you can hit no thanks, but we're basically done at this point. So we've got the whole Google Nest Mini set up, but you're going to need more than this on this kind of a device. So what I'm going to tell you is to head over to the video that's up on screen now. It has time codes to walk you through all the different features that you would ever need in the Google Home application and you can get everything set up and working perfectly. Otherwise, thanks for watching today and of course, don't hate, automate.